Hi, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for beaming me in from New Zealand. For sure. Now, this beautiful marvel of engineering behind us is the Deep Sea Challenger. Now, you co-designed and co-engineered the submersible and science platform. And with it, you became the first solo pilot in history to dive to the Challenger Deep, the deepest place on the planet, about seven miles down, if I understand correctly. Yeah. Now, of course, you weren't focused on first uh, adventure, but rather on advancing deep sea ocean science. Now, the submersible allowed you to sample and image in revolutionary new ways. Um, with camera systems, you also, if I understand correctly, you designed. How has technology empowered you scientifically and creatively? Look, I think almost everything I do in every single day is empowered by technology. Sometimes it's, a, it's a tools that other people have created. Sometimes it's tools that we've had to create for ourselves. So if you have a curious mind like, like I do and you want to go places and you want to physically project your body into those places, you build a, a piloted submersible and you get in it and you go and you assemble a team to do that and to see what's out there and put the pieces together and create new things where you need to. If you want to project your consciousness into a place you can't physically go, like inside the Titanic, you build a small robotic vehicle that spools a fiber optic and you fly it inside there in a, in a kind of avatar experience. So remotely operated vehicles are essentially physical avatars in the, in the physical world. And then of course all the stuff I'm doing with the avatar movies is uh, both thematically about projecting our minds into other bodies and it's also about creating a, a VR universe around us, around our actors and, may, and, and bringing that world to life in all, in all its detail. And that required whole new tool sets and those tool sets are constantly evolving. So I would say, short of making my orange juice in the morning, there's not much I can do in a given day that doesn't involve uh, building and iterating these tool sets. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. So what are your thoughts on the potential for the Hololab and your partner OceanX to be enabled to both enable and engage the new generation of ocean explorers through technology? Well, look, I think it's I think it, there are multi levels to this, right? So we can put our researchers, our young researchers right there on the Ocean Explorer ship into complex data sets that have been gathered by the ship, maybe gathered by the submersibles, maybe it's bathymetry and they can plan a dive, they can literally walk around the dive site before they actually go down there, or they could they could plan um, a, uh, an ROV dive, let's say. Let's say it's too deep for their submersibles and they're going to go down with a remotely operated vehicle. They can see, well, this is canyon terrain, this is going to be difficult, we're going to have to keep the ship in a certain place so that we can see that down there and have good communications with the vehicle for tracking, that sort of thing. So a lot of planning can be done. Now you start overlaying into that data sets of animals that have been seen, uh, maybe squid schools that have been seen on sonar, that sort of thing, say, this is what we expect to see at this depth. So our researchers can plan their work. But the beauty of it is that they can bring the, the audience along with them. Now, sure, it'll be a 2D representation, but eventually what I would love is that people, when they're, when they're watching our episodes, are actually in this VR experience or some kind of augmented reality experience, and they're seeing a little more of what our researchers saw and experienced at the time. And this is all happening for real. This isn't some show piece or something that we just put on, you know, as a kind of a visual effect in a science fiction movie. This is an actual tool that's being used. You know, I started using HoloLens in its, in its earlier form with Jet Propulsion Laboratory when we were planning, uh, we were designing and, and uh, planning a mission to Europa, a lander mission to Europa, um, for real. You know, so it's, it's been a tool that's been used extensively, but now we're bringing a much bigger audience into it and a much, much vaster kind of sea of u users into this great VR space that you and I know so well and, and use, but now we're making it available to everyone. That's incredible. Uh, thank you for the answer. It's absolutely inspiring to hear you speak. Last question, if I may. More than 30 years ago, On the Abyss, one of my all-time favorite movies, by the way, you developed revolutionary 
underwater lighting and communication systems. You created, as you talked about in your previous answer, remote observation vehicles to, Im to image inside the Titanic, for example. And then you created uh, and pioneer virtual camera systems and other breakthroughs needed to be able to shoot Avatar, which, by the way, is my daughter's all-time <laughs> favorite movie. Well, thank you for that. So basically, you have been living in mixed reality for more than 15 years. Can you tell us a little bit how it feels to be here today with us um, as a hologram and what your dreams are for what this technology can actually enable in the future? Well, look, I can say I can say having been in, in VR and AR spaces for the last 15 years at, at least that there are no uh, negative side effects that I can see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's it's actually it's actually a great a great way to work and to create and to co-create with other people. Um, and I think that the the sky's the limit on on these collaborative VR and AR workspaces. Uh, if I, I think your your film that you open with shows the possibilities for for medicine, for collaboration, for for industrial design, engineering, and just for fun, just for the arts, just for just for creativity. You know, we've been using it in a in a very creative way on the uh, the avatar, avatar productions for the last few years. The last really uh, we started in in uh, 2005, so it's been you know coming up on 16 years, and you know it's it's constantly improved to the point that it's an absolute joy to work in that space every day. Now I use a, a physical camera that I hold in my hands. I don't use I don't use the HoloLens and we don't use that for the actors because we can't obscure their faces, but it's exactly the same set of principles. And you just get used to it. You get used to it. And and I I see us in a sense ultimately transcending our bodies, transcending our borders, transcending our cultures. And that's a great thing. We need that. We need to we need to understand that people in in Calcutta, in Moscow, in Beijing, in, in, the, in the U.S., in the U.K., wherever. We're all, we all love and want the same things. We're all one big uh, unified team, if you will, planet team, team of seven billion. And we've got to crack the code on all these problems that are, that are existential problems that are facing us. And to do that, we've got to break down borders. We don't need walls. We need, we need this. We need this sense of collaboration. We need the sense of togetherness. And this technology can do that, can help do that. It's hard to stand in a place with somebody and share a problem with them or share a joyful moment with them and then think of them as somebody else, someplace else that, that you don't care about. Absolutely inspiring, Jim. Uh, what a great honor to have you be on stage with us today. Um, I'm super looking forward to being able to watch Avatar 2 whenever it comes out. So am I. Um, and I'm super, super <laughs> appreciative to see you on stage with us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot.